guys, so we're right now at Run Republic. Uh, we're gonna meet with my friend Joe. He's like a shoe guru. This is his store. It's half gym, half shoe. And I reach out to him every once in a while when I'm trying to get ready for a race and I want to find out the best shoes. Like I started consulting with him on best shoes to get ready for my marathon. Now we're gonna be training for things like high rocks. We're gonna go back to marathons, do some Spartan races this year. So I wanted to give you guys an episode to let you guys know if you're a dynamic running athlete where you might be doing a trail race, a road race, a Spartan race, whatever it might be, I wanted to give you guys the best information possible on what kind of shoes to wear. Like somebody like myself, I'm really into boots. As you can see, I've got a wild collection of these. But then also when it comes to racing and training, it's all about the shoes that I wear. I wanna have the best performance in my body, but then transfer all the way into the ground where I'm gonna get my most performance from. So I'm gonna bring you in, introduce you to Joe. We're gonna mask up just for the part entrance so we can be you know, part of the regs, regulations around here. So follow me in, we're gonna have a good time. Joe, yeah. this is the camera, this is the team. Nick behind the camera, obviously. This guy right here is our specialist. He's gonna kind of take us through all the kind of shoes you could wanna wear for any kind of sport that you wanna be involved in. Um, where would you want to start? Trail, road, hybrid? Let's start with uh, trail. All right. Yeah, so let's go back over here real quick. So there's some trail shoes with each of the brands that we carry, but uh, one shoe that has the most amount of shoes on the PCT, so we're on the West Coast, is Ultra. Yeah. So Ultra Zero Drop, they have the most amount of shoes on the PCT. And we carry all the most popular trail shoes here. Yeah, and I've run in them a lot. Uh, I'm going to give a tip to anybody who's watching us. I don't want to bash Ultra. I love them as a training shoe. I ran um, our national championships for OCRWC in those in their Mountain King. Mm -hmm. And because the toe box is so wide, immediately the uh, foam, uh, whatever, the, the insole lifted up and was now loosely running around in my shoe. Yep. Not a great racing shoe, but a very, at least for high capacity, high speed, but great training shoe, the best, at least that I've, I've done. Yeah, I've had a similar experience and I ended up gluing mine down. Yeah, I ended up first, doing that. Yeah. The second race, I ended yeah. up gluing it down. I was ripped, ripped chip pissed, but so, you know. Um, a new shoe that's uh, uh, making big noise right now is by North Face. So they came out with their Vective series. Yeah. So it's the very first full carbon plated trail shoe so you can see that here I, I tell people it's like the Lamborghini of trail shoes so yeah 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 um, you can see the carbon plate comes all the way out and then they have three different versions so you have does this have the same kind of response um, that you'd find in like a super shoe like or what's the is it bit safety or well so with the trail the reason why I think other brands haven't brought in a carbon plate with with trail shoes is yeah. because of maybe the instability yeah. that you might have so with this what they did was they put the plate directly under the insole. Yeah. So you can see the plate is right there. You just have a very thin insole and the plate is right underneath. So it helps with stability. Okay. Um, but the super shoes, like the ones like the road shoes, the plate is in the middle. So yep. we'll, we'll talk about those. Okay. We got some picked out for you. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Um, so, where are we off to next? So then you have the Peregrine, which you, you're familiar with, right? Yep. So we just this is my go-to trainer right here. Spartan race. I, t I raced this model right here, I think, um, from 2016 all the way through 2019. And now they've changed it up a little bit, but um, I would say great for training, great for racing, sturdy body. Um, really, even though if you're doing OCRs, like I think this is your go-to OCR shoe. Uh, enough bulk. I don't know if you got any opinions on it. Yeah, I think it's really good for uh, technical trails too. So if you're doing like a, a just a mountain race, anything technical, this is really good and agile. And it's it's not like some of the other popular shoes right now that have a huge stack height. Yeah. So because it's lower to the ground, you have more stability. Yeah, I like it. Um, like, have you ever done the Baldy race? Yes. I've raced multiple times in that in the Baldy race. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm a 109, 108 guy. Yeah. What you, you got me by like 12 minutes. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I, I banded it, though, so I don't have a hard record. Okay. Yeah. I showed up. I couldn't get the ticket into the race. Yeah. I, I'm not suggesting anybody bandit races, but if you can't get in, you should band it a race. <laughs> I was like, it's better to run, not to run. Um, right. I'll let you go. Guys, right? So yeah. um, the most popular ultra marathon trail shoe is going to be the Speed Goat. Yeah. So it's by Hoka One One, and you can see, like I was saying, a much higher stack height. Did you say Hoka One One? Yeah. Is that the full name? That that's usually how they pronounce it. Some sometimes they go back and forth, and they call it Hoka One One, but it's really it originally was Hoka One One. Aren't yeah. they out of like? Uh, they're not out of Hawaii. I thought they were out of Salt Lake. Uh, well, right now they're owned by uh, Deckers out of like 
around Santa Barbara area. Oh, really? So, but they originated, I want to say, in Europe. Oh, okay. And then I think Australia is where they're getting these names. Like Maybe the Ultra is out of Salt Lake. They were, yes. Okay. They did. That's where they originated, yep. Okay. So, um, but yeah, so you see the, the large stack height. So this is like a maximum cushion trail shoe. So if you're going to do, I'd say a 50K and more, this is usually what, what you're going to go to. I ran the whole Backbone Trail in the Torrance. Yep, yep. That one? This one right here. Yep, this is the Torrent. Uh, oh, oh, wait, no, this is the Challenger. So yeah. I have the Torrent out right now. I like that one a lot. I've never done the Speed Goat. Um, I don't... I don't know. I have a couple pairs of Hoka's that I hang out in that I absolutely love, yeah. but um, for the most part, I, I steer clear of them. But you like them. I like them, but it's I'm not doing obstacle races, and um, it's more you know straight away. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, for me, uh, when I first started running, I was 235 pounds, like I was telling you. Big boy. Well, Must, yeah. Lots Dude, of muscle, he used to be like four percent so. body fat, yeah. bodybuilder, Huge. all muscle and hustle. <laughs> yeah. I got to see some of these pictures. Absolutely. I'm a little bit jealous. <laughs> So, um, all right, so we move on over here with uh, New Balance. So they came out with their Max, you know, stack height trail shoe. So this is the Fresh Foam More Trail shoe. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people really love it. You can see it looks very similar to the Speed Goat. I'd say one of the big differences is it's a wider toe box and more breathable yeah. than the Speed Goat. I like that a ton. Um, I'll give you guys a, a little story. I showed up to my first ever high rocks and tried to race in a trail shoe because there's the sleds. I thought for sure, I was like, this is gonna have so much grip, I'm gonna be the toughest guy. Did not stick at all. I had the slowest sled time of anybody of the pros. Uh, so one tip, don't wear trail shoes to a high rocks. Um, no knock on- Was that on turf? It was on turf. Yeah. It was a terrible idea. Well, what, was did, what did people mostly wear on that turf? Like um, you know what? I think this is like kind of like a curveball in a different direction, but if you guys just wanna know, I race in the Brooks 8 launch. So if you have something like this that has as much rubber contact as possible, area, that's yeah. the most important thing. Just because, you know, the grant, like whatever you call it, like the fake turf, yeah. it lifts up. Yeah. And if you don't have more surface space on it, then you have less traction. So, I don't know. Makes sense. Science. I know, dude, I did the same thing. I was like, clever, man. Back in. Alright, All right, so uh, speaking of Brooks, we have the Brooks Cascadia, so that's their most popular trail shoe so this yep. one's tried and true so i've been using it a lot lately yep yep it's a really good run that's it for the trail shoes and then as far as road shoes yeah we have all the most popular road shoes uh brooks is number one out of all shoe sales running really shoe sales yep and hoka just uh snuck up to number two really yep and i believe new balance is number three so so you're saying we just start a shoe company <laughs> and take it over Brooks. <laughs> yeah. So I used to run a little bit in Skechers, and I, truth be told, I feel like this is a really great 5K to half marathon shoe. Have you seen these things sell? Yep. Yep. They're doing really well. And was this the one that you ran in, or are you not sure? The uh, I don't remember. I mean, it was a similar foam structure, and it just it seemed like a really great shoe. There's a couple shoes where I just feel like, you know, I feel like they should get a little more attention. Like this is a great 5K shoe, it feels like. It is. It, yeah. it actually has a carbon plate in the forefoot as well. Okay. So, and, it, and it's five ounces. Yeah. So it's not enough people know about the shoe yet, but this is like kind of the secret weapon for all the like really fast one mile runners. Yeah. One mile and up, like up to about 10K. Okay. Yeah. I like the sounds of that. Secret weapon right there. So, and then this is actually the same shoe, just different colors. Yeah. Without the carbon plate, but everything's pretty much the same there. So just a quick question. If you were somebody first getting into running and they just wanted to go. Five gear, 10K, it depends. I kind of, we try to look at everybody with their, you know, their previous fitness coming in here. Okay. Maybe their, you know, their body weight, about how many miles they're going to put on. Yeah. So if it is somebody that I would say is like under 200 pounds, yep. um, I would lean towards something like this. It's really light, has plenty of cushion. Yeah. Uh, it's going to feel fast and they'll definitely notice that it's a running shoe and it makes you want to run. Uh, but every brand that we carry here has something that's kind of comparable that would fall into like a lighter racing and training shoe. What's an advanced shoe? Where like where are the pros sitting these days? So this would be one of them here, okay? And then those other ones. It's called right? the Razor Elite. The Razor Elite, yep. So <laughs> like I was saying, you have your carbon fiber in the forefoot. And that's one of the big trends of the last year, year and a half, was putting a carbon fiber plate throughout the shoe. They're one of the first brands to just stick it in the forefoot. Hmm. So and the carbon fiber plate comes 
all the way up on the sides here, so you kind of have like uh, a little bit more stability. Okay. So that would be an elite uh, racing shoe. And then we have some of those other ones I actually pulled on the side for you over here. Okay. And uh, just like out of trail shoes, um, what would you say is like, a go-to safe call for someone showing up at your shop. If they weren't in your shop and you're going to be able to give them your expert advice, yeah. if they were going to go on the shop or online, what's a go-to, like, you know, middle of the road, a little technical, a little bit of fire road, a little fun run? Uh, so I would say if they haven't tried a Hoka, uh, they have to try a Hoka. Yeah. And so like I was saying, they're number two now. And they actually make a shoe called the Challenger ATR, so it's all terrain. Yep. So you can see it, it does have some traction on here, but it's meant to run trails and road. Okay. So I would say this is something that people have to try on if they come in. Uh, and then their most popular road shoe would be the Clifton. Yep. If we're just going to do road only. And if you saw someone going to an obstacle course race, they're coming in, hey, I got a Tough Mudder or a Spartan race coming up, what do you suggest? So I'm going to go back to Ultra and yep. just see if they want something that's definitely going to have a low stack height so that they have lots of stability they're low to the ground they could hit technical you know stuff they can hit all their obstacles um possibly like a cross-country racing flat yep. if it has good grip on the bottom so that would be these with new balance okay and then we would just uh you know go from there okay i like the sounds of it all right guys we're gonna go talk about the most exciting part of this trip super shoes uh what's up guys so we're now sitting down in the gym it's actually a really cool space um once things kind of open back up here if you guys ever want to work out that's a pretty cool opportunity um but we're going to talk super shoes now this is kind of like the the frontier of performance racing and i reached out to him the other day and i said listen i'm really interested in doing this marathon i don't have any experience in these kind of shoes so obviously i'm going to come out uh, catch up with you and come see what it's all about. So uh, I'm going to let you take the microphone for a second. You can explain what a super shoe is to myself, who doesn't know anything about it, and our viewers who probably don't know much about it either. Okay, great. Yeah, thanks for coming. We So super shoe kind of became popular about a year and a half ago. So basically it's a shoe with, you know, max cushioning and the dynamics of the shoe are, are set to propel you forward. Yeah. So they put a carbon plate is kind of the thing. So they put a carbon fiber plate throughout the insole of the shoe, yeah. right? And um, the plate has rigidity to it. So there's different plates that have more rigidity or less rigidity and they'll propel you forward. Yeah. So there's been a lot going on with carbon plated shoes over the last year, year and a half. So what I have here for you is I have the Endorphin Pro. So that's a full carbon plated shoe, but then I also have the Endorphin Speed. Ooh, Yes. Nice. So that has a nylon plate, right? What's so, the difference? So the nylon plate is not as rigid as the carbon plate. Yep. I would still consider it a super shoe. Uh, lots of people are racing in this shoe as well as training in the shoe. So, uh, so one of the differences um, when you're looking at a regular trainer or a carbon fiber super shoe plated yep. trainer is that you probably don't train in the carbon fiber plated shoe all the time because it might it's really rigid. It might make your foot sore. I was about to say, yeah. so is there a downside? Because that does sound like it might be so powerful that it might go up into like that really, really tight, like everything down in my ankle up into my calf is some pretty tight meat. Yes, exactly. So there's a group of runners that I kind of look to. They're called the doctors of runner, yep. uh, running, doctors of running. And I look to them to kind of see the reviews because nobody's doing what they're doing. So they, they're all elite runners and then they come from a medical and biomechanical standpoint when they're Smart. analyzing shoes, yeah. So they did a, a study on carbon fiber plated shoes and basically the G-forces and all the forces that your body's creating, uh, it, it has to go somewhere. Yeah. So just like you said, if, if, this, if it's not going, if your foot is not going through the normal motion and, and mechanics, then those forces are gonna move upwards. Yeah. So, you, so like you said, you might get really sore calves. So I, I knew you were coming, I didn't want to only give you the carbon plated shoe, so I yep. got the nylon plated shoe as well. Okay. And so this one you can train in, you can feel what it's like to have a plated shoe, it's still going to propel you forward, but the nylon plate is not as rigid, you can see here. A lot of flex. Yep. Yeah. Not too much flex, let's try that, it's still snappy. Oh, you're right, actually. Yeah. Not like a normal shoe, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then you have the carbon plated shoe. So I imagine that one we were talking about in there, that lightweight sketcher probably could fold over completely. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so then you have the carbon plated shoe and you could feel how much more rigid this is. I mean, it'd be really hard to bend it all the way. Don't test me. Yeah, don't break it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very cool looking shoe. Yeah. So I think 
that guy Nick Bear is racing in these. Is he in these? He is. So he's he he's training and, and racing. Uh, he's training mostly in this. Fellow bulk pony. Yes. So, yeah. And uh, but when he races, he uses the the carbon plated, full carbon plated. Yeah. Now, just so people such as myself who are probably gonna have to swipe a credit card soon, how much do these shoes cost? So yeah. So when you are adding more premium materials and you're adding carbon fiber, it does get more expensive. Yeah. So they're using more foam. You can see they're just there's more material on the shoes, so that is part of the justification for the increase in price. So yep. this is going to sit about two hundred dollars, and this is going to be about one hundred sixty. Okay. And then they have like a training version that has doesn't have a plate. Yeah. Or some of these brands are coming out with maybe like a plastic plate. Yeah. So you still get a little bit of a sensation of that plated shoe. And that usually sits around 130. So just out of curiosity also, you said that the Nikes don't really last. Um, no offense, Nike. I know you make really great stuff, but yours is maybe just for racing. How long will the longevity of a sh like a, like a, basically the trail life of a shoe like this be? So it should run the same longevity of their normal trainers. Uh, this shoe right here will be about 300 miles. Okay. Should feel good. Uh, and then like you're referencing to, to the Nike, uh, like next percent, their carbon plated race shoes are gonna be much less under 100 miles for sure. Yeah. yeah. So somebody like myself, if I was just getting into it, you'd say start here and then upgrade to here or reverse or both? Um, if you can, ideally you would do both. Yep. So you would train in this, you get your foot kind of used to the feeling of it. You'd put this on maybe on your, on your speed workouts, yep. the carbon plated shoe, and then see if you can get yourself comfortable to using it uh, for your race day. Okay. But I wouldn't just suggest for people to buy a race specific shoe and not put some miles on it before race day. Okay. So, but yeah, definitely I would start in the nylon plated shoe and then test out the pro. And what distance is somebody looking at for these shoes? Uh, these are these are meant to race marathon distances, but okay. you can you people use them for 5Ks as well. Okay. So huh. anything in between. So and also like if you're gonna put something like this on as far as training goes, like is there some way of ramping up into it, or do you just say right away it could be your shoe tomorrow? Uh, I would say use it on your shorter runs during the week to start. Anytime you're putting on any type of shoe that has a different geometry or something with a plate in it, if you're not used to it. So I would say yeah. Start with the shorter runs, see how it feels, and then then build up. I wouldn't just jump into your long runs on one of these shoes, no matter how good it might feel. Huh. Yeah. I know that sounds crazy. I probably wouldn't do this, but would something like this work for something like a high rocks? Or do you think that the dynamic movements that go into an event like that are too much for something with a stack height like this? Yeah, exactly. I think whenever you're moving laterally, when you have something with a large stack height, um, you're going to be prone to rolling your ankle and, yep. and the, the upper probably won't be able to support that lateral movement. You'll have too much wiggle. Huh. Your foot will slide off the edge. All right. I'm definitely yeah. not wearing these. No. Well, guys, thanks for tuning in and getting to learn about this stuff. You're going to be seeing me run more in these. And uh, obviously, we're going to try to bring more information to you guys about the running. Uh, if you have any questions, is there ways that we can reach out to you and kind of get to know more about what you're doing? Absolutely. Uh, so our website is werunrepublic.com and our Instagram is werunrepublic and our business is Run Republic, So He's very responsive. He's yeah. giving me all my answers quite, quite quickly. Please. All right, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll bring more to you soon. We're back. <laughs> We're talking about yeah, shoes right. again. Yeah. All right. So. That does look like a really good looking shoe. Like yeah. I'm not going to lie from the appearance if like... I think a lot of people who are buying shoes, they want to look good. Yeah. Like that's why a lot of people buy Nike stuff. When I looked at that first one that came out, I was like, yeah, everything from the foam under probably is high performance. Everything above here looks like it should be a Velcro shoe. Yeah. Like, so, okay, so funny thing about this shoe. This is the Saucony Icon. It is, they're celebrating their 40 years. Yeah. So this is the exact same thing. The design. vintage pattern. Yes, the vintage pattern. I so, respect that. Yeah, yeah. I respect that. Like that right yeah. there though, I'm like, damn, that's a Ferrari on the road. I'm like, I like it. And this one right here, this has got great color. It looks cool. I'm like, let's do it. I'll yeah. Wear, wear this around town. Yeah, so disclaimer, you can get this shoe with this upper. Okay, okay. I just, I just got you the vintage one. You know what's so funny? Some people wear such weird shoes just for fashion statements. Yeah. I remember Reebok first came out with their weightlifters. I went to a Spartan race one time and a guy was walking around in literally hard framed weightlifters yeah. like they were shoes. And like those are some stiff ass shoes, yeah. but when you want to make a statement, you got to make a statement. All right. <laughs>
lifters? I don't know about that, but he was wearing jeans and lifters, <laughs> and I was like, dang, dude. Dude, I'm trying to be like you. Yeah. <laughs> Right, you talking about these guys? Yeah, this guy. What do you think about these shoes? Huh? These are great looking. Okay. Yeah, I've so always been a huge them, fan right? of New, New Balance. Balance. Yeah. Like I, is it the Vizant, Vizante? Viz, Zante, Zante. The Zante is like that was my go-to when I was racing TMX and I was doing road races. That was go-to, and then I started to get into their bigger body shoes, and they just didn't seem to fit my foot as well. But this right here, it almost looks like it's like a Jordan like basketball shoe. It's kind of really sleek. And it's got like a good sturdy body to hold your foot in. It does, and then look at the um, the, the outsole, right? So look at all this contact, the rubber, like yep. it's, you know. So one thing that they did really well is the rubber on here. The grip is awesome. So. So this is something I was talking to you guys about before. Like we're gonna bring it back to High Rocks. Uh, if you do want to go and race something like that, it has to have as much contact space as possible. Um, it's just like super important. The little granular material of a uh, turf. If you're somehow that's sp splitting and getting separated, it's, it's super bad. And as far as road racing, I don't know. I mean, I, I try to compare all these things. This material right here, this kind of sleek, like, you know, super, whatever kind of foam you want to call that. Um, it doesn't have, it's not as tacky as this. This right here has got it, but then it's got that foam down there. So if you get any surface space on that, you're toast. And does that make a difference for you guys and like your kind of road racing? It does. So, I mean, mostly like the longevity of the shoe. So yep. it, it like, this is going to last longer as far as the grip uh, than this one. Right. Yep. And then this one, this one will last probably the longest. Right. And why would a company want to go with this material other than cutting weight? They cutting just want to make it lighter, huh. so feel racier. I guess you're right. Yeah. Just cut it, cut off half an ounce, you know? Uh, I don't know about make that. Make it bright yellow and you run fast. hundred percent, dude. I'm a yellow guy. <laughs> So these are all the materials. So if you were going to go out and you were going to wear one of these super shoes, what's the one you're going to? I'm, I'm going to go with uh, the Pro, the Saucony uh, Endorphin Pro myself. Yeah, yeah and I'm going to train in the retro. <laughs> so I'm yeah. going to train in the, in the speed. So, and like I said, it has this, it does have the nice upper. You can get in the nice upper, but I'm going to train the speed because it has more flex. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm going to race in the Pro. And you know what was my favorite road running racing shoe of all time? The Firefly. Do you remember that? I didn't have it, a oh my Saucony. gosh! It was Saucony, yeah. the Firefly. It was this bright orange with yellow accents through here, yellow laces and yellow on the inside. And this down here was white, but it was just like that thin little slice of white. And I went out and I ran my first ever 10K. I think I ran like a 33, and I beat some guy. I banded at that race too. Yeah, I was just like, I was like, I didn't pay for this thing. I got to run fast. <laughs> so. I went through the finish line and they're like, and they're like, where's your bib? I was like, I didn't pay. And then I just went straight through the finish line to my car. But that was like my favorite shoe by far. And he comes out with, with uh, great colors. Yeah, man. Colors. It's a good, good company. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, we're back again and now we're going to button it up again. Um, is there anything else you wanted to share about somebody you'd want to know about shoes in general when it comes to this stuff? Uh, yeah, I would say uh, if you want to have longevity in the sport of running and you want to avoid uh, all the overuse injuries that people have. Yep. Try to try to rotate your shoes, and if you can, ideally, you'd get three different pairs of shoes with three different types of geometry. So you can see here this, like, let's say this the stack height between the heel and the forefoot might be on this one like a eight millimeter differential. Yep. And then you know ultra zero drop, right? Yep. So that's completely two different types of geometry, right? So when you're putting your foot into a shoe, think of it like you're putting your foot, you know, into a cast, right? So it, if you're going to put your foot into the same shoe, the same geometry over and over, it's going to feel good. It's going to support you in a certain way, but you're going to lose strength and function in other ways. And so if, if I've learned anything from just, you know, owning a running store, uh, running the last 12 years, running ultra marathons, uh, being a bigger guy when I started, right? Mm -hmm. I learned the hard way and I got the overuse issues. I wore the exact same shoes all the time. Now what I'm learning is, you know, you have to rotate your shoes, you got to do your foot exercises, but probably the biggest thing is, you know, try to get at least two different shoes, uh, three would be ideal with different stack heights, different heel to toe drops. Yep. So traditional Brooks or, or New Balance or what most people are used to is about an eight to 12 mil millimeter heel to toe drop. Mm -hmm. And then Hoka is doing only four to five millimeter heel to toe drop. So that's like in the middle. Yep. And then you have ultra with the, which is zero drop. Yep. So if you can do all three, then you're going to keep your foot healthy and they each serve a different purpose. So that's my advice. 
Take it from the best, guys. That's why we're here. Shoe Guru. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Over and out.